What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Mech Drop True Grand Master. In the last few episodes, we've already reached high diamond. Only a few more wins required for Master League. And we have been experimenting like crazy. Hellion drops, double Hellion drops, tank drops, Thor drops. And we have so much more to figure out. Let's begin. All right, first game of the day is against a Terran. I, I almost got tricked by the portrait. I was going to say a Zerg, but it is a Terran player. Now, for today, I have a theme. Today, I want to go back to, I want to say... 2014 where hellbat drops were the meta hellbat drops in every single matchup obviously i'm not gonna have the same follow-up because my follow-up is gonna be to drop even more mech but hellbat drops is gonna be a good start now i've been paying close attention to the comments as always and something i noticed is that you guys are not really a fan of using the air units despite them counting as mech so i'm i'm kind of in line with that i agree with that sentiment so i think i'm gonna be sticking to mostly mech drops uh, you know, a lot of people do want to see landed Vikings, so I'll consider that for sure. But we're going to mostly stick to dropping those factory units from those medevacs. Now, what is the perfect build to start dropping Hellbats as soon as possible? If you guys don't remember this, this was actually a very crazy era in the time of StarCraft. 2014, Heart of the Swarm was just released. Or maybe it was even 2013, actually. Or actually, did, uh, did the Hellbat drop era last for that long? Because I do remember still being Hellbat dropped in 2015. Was this really two years long? I'm not sure. But anyway... Uh, Heart of the Swarm released and Hellbat drops became meta. They had, I think they got nerfed twice. They had so much damage that initially you were able to drop four of them. Now it's only two. You used to be able to drop four. And they did damage as if they had blue flame built in. Like they were actually just crazy. Nowadays, they're obviously not as good. It's not as popular of a strategy. Though I do love the idea of having constant harassment with Hellbat drops, setting yourself up from the macro game. If you guys have watched me long enough, you know that's my favorite style anyway. Just harass, harass, harass. At some point you get ahead and then you can finish the game with a big attack. Or in some cases, I just drop a planetary there and skip all the harassment, you know. Uh, but it is what it is. Now, let's see what our opponent's up to here. I am going for a Reaper Expand in a TVT, which is always a little bit scary. So I guess we're going to have to see what our opponent is doing. No SCV here, so probably not a Reaper Expand. Let's see. Are we being cheesed here? It looks like we are being cheesed. All right. There's not a lot of SCV, so this most likely is going to be a proxy 2-Rex Reaper. Or actually, it could even be 3, considering the low SCV count. Oh, this is actually a pretty good map for that. I have to say, guys, there's... Can I even cover all the spaces with bunkers? I'm not sure. Now, my idea here is actually really crazy. I'm going to proxy my factory... Uh, at the starport and just try to get the hellbat jobs going from there and the defense I guess we're just gonna have to be perfect guys. It's not it's not a pleasant situation, but it is what it is This is my opponent that's so little SCVs and no orbital. I feel pretty uh, All right, just having to put a lot of SCVs here. Nothing has hit us yet. There we go. The first Reaper is here This Reaper is a little bit late. Oh, he's not microing it properly. He might actually lose that This Reaper is late and suspicious. This is starting to look like this could be a proxy 111 uh, instead of multi ranks Reaper. Like, that Reaper is a normal timing from just one barracks. So I'm not 100% convinced that there's more barracks at play here. Oh, it was really nice positioning on that bunker there. I'm going to get my second uh, gas as well. Now, I need to keep in mind the limit. This is actually going to be a little bit scary because I have a limit of making Marines, of course. I'm going to reach it soon. I have two more Marines in me, and then I'll reach five Marines. And then I guess I'll just build a reactor here. And I'll make an armory when I have the gas. Dude, this build is actually freaking cool, I want to say. I'm not sure if it's a good build. Don't, don't get fooled, but this build is freaking cool. Reactor, Hellbat drop next to someone's base. Now, I'm still convinced there's something weird build. And the scariest thing I could play against is actually a Mark build. Nothing would be scarier right now than a proxy Thor. Because five Marines do not beat a Thor. Let me tell you guys that much. Let's see what's going on here. There's just one barracks, two barracks. Okay, so he's still making Reapers. He actually is saving a lot of Reapers. I think he might have just made his um, second barracks very late, or maybe both the barracks were actually very late. That's also possible. I do have to expand. Should I just go for a hidden expansion over here? I can't really leave my base. I also can't make more Marines, so the logical thing is to expand. So I guess I'll just make an expansion over here. Let me see what he has in his base. There's still no orbital. This guy has 5 million Reapers. Yeah, exactly. He has 5 million Reapers out of my base. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a funny one. He's not going to be able to break the bunkers. So I think I'm just going to... Oh, he did... Yeah, that armory is going to be cancelled. I guess I'll just cancel the armory and just start dropping these Hellions one by one then. Or, or well, four by four, I suppose. Don't think I even need more medevacs. I'm going to be able to kill uh, his entire mineral line with this. I don't actually have more supply to make anything. Okay, four Hellions are out. I'm going to drop those here. I can only imagine he has more barracks hidden somewhere. Uh, mostly because he doesn't have an orbital. There's no reason to not have an orbital if it's just two barracks. He has one now, but it's very late. 
I want to guess that there's a third barracks hidden somewhere. Or even worse, still a Thor. Proxy 2 Rex Reaper into Thor. Then he would really be the biggest chat. Let's get some repairs. Gonna kill two Reapers. Oh, we're actually gonna kill everything. Man, Reapers suck against bunkers. Holy cow. Yeah, he's never trying that again. I can tell you guys that much. I mean, he doesn't have a single SCV left at this point. I think I could actually go for this. Maybe he's not paying attention. Watch the surround. No, I'm not gonna get the surround here. Well done by him. I do have a lot of Marines. Oh, the surround there. Oh, I could have. If I was a little bit more attentive, I could have surrounded that. Now, I did lose one of my Marines, so I'll be able to make another one here. Or I'll be allowed to make another one, rather. I'm going to scout around with these. I think he has enough... Yeah, exactly. He has enough Reapers to kill all of these Marines, so I have to bring my Hellions back. Mules actually did a little bit, little bit of mining, which is good. I'm still... Oh, wait. I actually did, wasn't allowed to make that Marine. Okay, lost another Reaper there. Lost two Reapers there. Okay, I think we've killed enough Reapers now to hold this off. This was a very scary game, I have to say. But unless he has hidden expand... We actually... I totally forgot we were the one with the hidden expansion. All right, this game was so hectic that I literally forgot I made a base there. I was going to say, unless he has hidden expansion, I think we have this in the back because I do have four Hellions here. Let's see. Gonna, oh, actually, he does have freaking eight Reapers now. Oh, we're going to get a really big line up there. There we go. Oh, my God. These hits are disgusting. That is actually just gross. Here we go. Let's lift those up. I did lose one of those. And now he's going to be cornered in my base. We have trapped him here. And these Hellions are going to be providing me with the W. Uh, I think he just did a pretty inefficient builder with just two barracks. Let's see. Okay, so there was a third barracks. I feel like because he had so much money he, or so many more Reapers coming in even after I killed his SCVs, I thought maybe his build was not completely efficient, but it was indeed three barracks like I thought. And this game, it went down to the wire, okay? Because his attack was slow, I was really hoping we could do the help at jobs, but he killed the armory, but still, fantastic warm-up game. Let's go to game number two. All right, game number two is against the Protoss. Now... We are still going to go with the Hellbat Jobs. I don't think Hellbat Jobs are the weak out of all matchups. It is the weakest against Protoss, if I would have to guess. So we're going to need to figure out a way to do this correctly. I think it might be smarter for me to do it extra fast. So in the last game, I went for the Reaper Expand. Once again, that map seemed pretty crazy for Boxer Reaper, by the way. There were so many spots to cover. But anyway, last game we went for a Reaper Expand, going for like an economic approach. But here, against Protoss, I think we need to do as much damage as possible. At least if I imagine how a TVP is going to go. If I commit too much to economy and doing Hellbat drops, I can't really see how we're going to beat, like, Phoenixes, first of all, because they would just shut down the drops. Well, me not having economy behind it, a Blink Stalker attack would be rough because I won't be able to afford tanks behind it. So I think we're just going to have to do this really fast. If this works, it would actually be really, really cool, by the way. You know, bring back the meta from eight years ago or so. That's just a really cool feeling. Obviously, if you guys don't know, I've been playing StarCraft pretty much since the beginning. Not quite the beginning. I didn't play the beta. I uh, think I started roughly when Wings of Liberty was released, so maybe a few months after. But I know the meta since, like, 2011. So I've, you know, experienced all of those, and it's really cool to relive them, even for just one YouTube episode, right? Now, uh, let's see how my... I think my build is going to work out perfectly, actually. I, think I, I was kind of doubting not going for a second gas. But going gas first, skipping the Reaper, basically means I have 100 more gas compared to a normal barracks first. I can make my factory before the expansion. Yeah, the hardest thing to fit in is actually the armory, because that is an additional 100 gas. But I think we're going to be okay. Here we go. Factory before expansion. That is basically the adaptation we're going to be doing for this game. I do still have to scout what he's up to. If he's going for a Stargate, for example, I'm still going to continue with my Hellbat attack, which sounds a little bit crazy, but uh, more than anything, uh, I just want to keep the aggression on and keep my uh, my enemy at home. Now, there's no pylon there. It's also a slightly late, late Nexus, I believe. Not super late, but it's a little bit late. Wall off here, which is perfectly fine for me because I do not have a Reaper. Now, he did just give me his probe for free, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, I think he just forgot about it because even... If it was a Marine first, that Reaper also would have already finished by the time. So I really think he just forgot about it, but that's okay. I think I'm going to build my Starport at home. I could consider proxying. If you think about it with mech drops to Grandmaster, I could technically proxy my Starport every time because I'm always going to use it to drop. But then if I drop tanks later, that means I'll have to walk my tanks across the map to get into the medevacs. And that part doesn't really sound like the best idea ever. Now, I think I'm going to skip the next few Hellions. Check this out as I'm trying to figure out this build. So normally, you make the depot instantly. You also cut SCVs out of gas so you have more money. But here, I need the extra gas for the armor. So I think I'm going to make the gas first, then the depot, and then I'll get back to making Hellions. Just as a reminder, only two Hellbats fit in a medevac, so don't, don't exactly need that many of them. Uh, actually, I could drop four Hellions and transform them into Hellbats. It just doesn't have the same initial impact, you know? 
No, it's probably a better idea to drop them as Hellions, but I just want to go for the biggest distraction possible. Hellbats are harder to kill. Ooh, that's an Adept that can damage. Hellbats are harder to kill than Hellions, so it will create the biggest panic, I think. Maybe we have an extra few probe kills, or we make the Protoss a little bit more scared, or maybe he loses some APM. Those are all benefits of the Hellbat drop. Now, the armory is not going to be finished by the time, uh, you know, my medevac finishes. It's going to finish around the time I arrive. So I'm going to have to do this the smart way. I think my plan here is... Let's see. Oh, I, I do need to think of a follow-up already. Okay. So I was thinking about sending a few Hellions at the front to distract him, kind of as a fake. But then again, I do really want to stick to the hell or to the mech drill part of the challenge as much as possible. So I think I'm just going to drop all four Hellions. Um, and maybe I can just... Oh, actually, that's an even crazier idea. I could put, morph two into Hellbats and keep two as Hellions, so if they run away, the Hellions can catch them. That is also a pretty cool idea, isn't it? Hmm. Let's see how it's going to work out. I mean, he could just have five Phoenixes here and kill my drop. No, oh, not five. Maybe three. But still. Okay, let's see. So I'm actually going to drop... Okay, he did see me. Then I'm going to use these two. Uh, I'm going to uh, attack him. And then, okay, he doesn't have units there yet. And when the units show up, I'll morph them into Hellbats. There we go. So now the probes are out of range. And now we're going to be morphing these into Hellbats. And see, they're actually so tanky, dude. These Stalkers are not managing to kill them at all. Look at these Hellbats with the healing. He does have two Stalkers there that he's not using, which is very unfortunate for him. And I already have another drop lined up here. And then behind this, I actually have to go for... Yeah, now he's starting the medevac, he realized. Now I have to go for a second factory instead of a third command center because I need tanks to defend. But this drop was already a massive success. I don't think he has a battery. These Hellbats are still alive. What is this insane drop? Is it, wait, am I going to kill everything here? I could kill the Hellbat. He's even using a force field. I'm walking into his natural mineral line. I'm thinking like what feels like five Stalkers. Going to kill four more probes here. Oh my god, this was actually the best drop I've done in ages. Okay, let me get these homies back because I want to use those for the next meta effect. Did I make one? Oh, I did make one. That is perfect. And I'm going to get these on the tech lab. And then the Hellions are going to come in once again. These I'm actually going to more... Okay, oh wait, here's the move. Two of them is no are normal. So they can catch them when they run away. And two Hellbats are there for the tankiness if I need it against the Stalker. Oh my god, these drops have just been absolutely brutal. He's recalling now, so I'm going to morph them all into Hellbats. Let me see. I have two more Hellions, right? Yeah, I do have two more Hellions. Let's get those in here as well. Dude, those Hellbats just can't die to those Stalkers. I don't know how this strategy is so good. It's actually crazy. He's struggling and he's just desperately trying to kill my freaking medevac, but he's just running away. He's not mining from the main base at all. He might even lose another stalker. There you go. I have another medevac on the way as well. I think I'm just going to go here and I'm going to morph these in hellbats already. Oh, he's targeting the medevac. Look. Oh my god, he got absolutely destroyed there. Now the Hellions are coming, going to come in as a flank in the main base. I was also going to morph those in the Hellbats, and there we go. I feel like this strategy was very confusing. I definitely lost my thoughts a little time, but this strategy was actually very good. Hellbat drops against Stalkers when the Stalker count is not that great. Apparently amazing. Now, obviously, the Micro could have been better on his side. He could have realized that the Hellbats weren't going to die as fast. He started attacking the Hellbats initially before re realizing he had to take down the Medivac, but still, absolutely beautiful strategy. Definitely going to try it more. Let's go to game number three. Right, game number three against another Protoss. Now, what am I going to do different from the last game? Also, after that last game, we did reach Masters already going very fast with that provisional MMR two and a half episodes, and that is beautiful. Now, the last game, the strategy was awesome. Like, I really love the strategy, but the follow-up, I wasn't so sure about. I feel like if... Let's say my opponent was going to go for an aggressive blink attack, would have had more Stalkers. My harassment wouldn't have done that well. And then my second factory felt, felt very late to defend with. Like, I don't think I would even have a single tank out, right? So that is uh, pretty problematic. I could try to do an even more aggressive version. Maybe I could do like a proxy star prod after all. Maybe I could go double gas as well. I guess we're still at the stage when we can get away with some crazy experiments. So that's what I'm going to do exactly. Though, gas versus double gas, I've said it many times before, I freaking hate doing that because you have absolutely zero money, uh, and that is annoying. I do like having money in my StarCraft games, as you can imagine. Well, not too much, because then I'm macro... <laughs> Excuse me, macroing poorly, but you guys know what I mean. Now, a proxy starport, why that could help me is because I did feel like the Hellions, they arrived a little bit early uh, compared to the Medivac. I could also do... I guess a greedier build order where I make less Hellions so I have less army in general, make some more economy, and then I guess the Hellbat drops show up when they do. That could also be an idea. But then 
it gets a little bit scary because you do definitely die to a few things. Hellions, in case you guys didn't know, if you're going to open Hellions against Protoss, it's already pretty dangerous. You are in trouble against someone simply chrono boosting Adepts and Stalkers across the map. So you can imagine what happens if you even skip a few Hellions. If then Stalkers and Adepts are chronoed across the map, it, it becomes a pretty tragic situation. Let's see, maybe I can damage that probe a little bit. I do have... I like. I need to scout with this at least to pretend, and that allows me to hide a starport. It's definitely a little bit scary though, because he's gonna see I don't have a natural, and it's gonna become a little bit obvious. I feel like people get a little bit over defensive against double gas in general, because normally double gas is an economic opener. In my case, it's definitely not gonna be economic whatsoever. So if my opponent over defends, uh, thinking I'm maybe going for a one base tank push, let's say, uh, it's actually gonna work out pretty well for him, and that's what we don't want. Let's see if there's a Nexus. That's the only thing I really want to see. There is a Nexus and there's also a Zealot. Where's the Zealot going? Okay, well, that's where I wanted to build my Starper, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, do I just follow the Zealot or like, what do I do now? Why is the Zealot going up here? Let me proxy my Starper in peace. I mean, I get he was trying to walk around, but if I already saw the Zealot, what's the point of that, right? All right, well, I guess our Starper is going to be delayed by about five seconds, which is unfortunate, but obviously very important that we don't get scouted here. I'm going to start making Hellions. I'm going to make an Armory as well. Uh, really fast. And then I'll make the Command Center. This build is... I'm really not sure how to feel about this, okay? I'm just I'm kind of struggling to imagine we can kill someone with really fast helmet jobs completely without a follow-up. But I guess technically we did that in the last game too and we hit even later, so who knows? Let me try to find that Zealot and kill it. Yeah, I was going to say, it should probably be right about here. Going to be a pretty easy kill, of course. Adept should be on the way. Could be a Stalker too. Yeah, okay, there's the Stalker. I don't want to take any damage on these. Uh, my opponent should 100% back off. If he goes here, he's going to lose those units for free. And that would obviously be uh, very unfortunate for him. And once I have four aliens, I'm going to go for it. And now you can already see why it's scary. Imagine if he's sending more and more Stalkers and I'm actually trying to expand. I would never be able to take this base. And that's why chronoing these units counters. Um, yeah, opening with aliens so hard. Even sending more Stalkers, he's being pretty crazy. You need to defend against these Hellions, my man. I mean, wait, I, I was actually thinking, normally I wouldn't be able to defend, but I can technically defend with two Hellbats. And I'm just going to go into his main base. Uh, here we go. Let's morph those into Hellbats right away. I mean, he's not going to have any defense for this. I think he might just die to this, guys. Do I even need Hellbats? What does he have here? He's one battery. Okay, let's see what I can do. But I'm actually going to morph them anyway because of the battery. Oh my god, look at this. It's going to be beautiful. There we go. He's going to lose all these probes here, and I haven't really... Wait, the Hellbats even won that trade. That's crazy. He doesn't have a battery overcharge. Look how many probes are dying. And now he's stuck here, having to defend four Hellbats. We're even going to run after his probes. The rest of my army can't go there. I still don't have a single... Uh, or I still don't have an expansion, is what I wanted to say. I mean, he has to run so far away. These Hellbats are just too tanky. They haven't even taken any damage yet. I guess we're going to fight against the Stalkers. Okay, he's starting the medevac now. This is the point of realization. He might lose that. Oh, he actually loses the stalker. The helmets are so good against these stalkers. It is actually freaking crazy how good they are. I never would have imagined. Now, let's try to get those there. Oh, that, is he preparing to type something or was that an accident? I'm not sure. Guess I'll make more medevacs. These are also going to go into the main base. I think I'm not going to morph these right away yet. Look how much trouble it is for him. Just simply kiting those. They die so slow because they're not armored. Okay, so he does have any more... Wait, guys. Call me crazy. I think we could actually kill that Immortal. I'm going to wall it in. Oh, he does have a battery overcharge available, though. And the battery is still healing pretty well. Let me lift this so he switches targets. There we go. This Hellbat is also still fragging. Even in Immortal has no chance against these Hellbats either. He needs to put the battery overcharge. There we go. He puts it down now. Maybe you going to save these two. I did have an expansion on the way, right? Okay, he's... I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure what's going on. Is his keyboard broken? Or like, uh, should I should I pause? Like, I actually have no idea what's happening here. Okay, check this out, guys. We are going to go for an absolutely beautiful finishing move. I'm also going to go for a 30 C behind it because I don't think... Yeah, there's no Twilight, so he can never overpower me. I'm going to drop this on top of his army if he has it at the front. It's going to be beautiful. Here we go. Stalkers are going to be surrounded. Look at the hell that's got. This is so majestic. He actually got the surround too. There if he can go. He tried to escape. I, I'm not sure if this was like a form of salt or like his keyboard was broken or I, I don't know what he was trying to do there. It was very strange. But the strategy looked pretty good. Now my opponent made it really hard on himself by actually attacking with those stalkers when he saw I had no natural. He definitely should have ran back to his base as fast as he could and defend. But the strategy, it's working out guys. The helmets are really freaking strong. And even this game, I was still underestimating him, but they really are that good. I think maybe Maybe this build in particular, maybe it's not the greatest, but with this strategy, with this kind of thing, with the Hellbat opening into transition, we could probably figure out a really good build for now. Let's go to game number four.
All right, the fourth game of the day against another Protoss player. Now, obviously, I'm going to go for some more Hellbat drops, but what is going to be the third version of this? I guess we could go for it a little bit later. We try. I feel like we tried the medium version, the really hardcore one-base version, and now we should probably try the economic version of the mech drop strategy. Now, what exactly is that going to be? I, Well, maybe we could go for just a reactor first. I was kind of wondering how we could open the early game with this, but if we go for a reactor first... We already have the reactor for the factory. We can get our one Reaper and five Marines to defend easily. And then we can go into the Hellbat drops. Now, one thing that I feel like we need, if we are going to go for consistent Hellbat drops in a macro game, we just must have a reactor on the starboard because we have so many Hellions. Hellions built so fast. And especially if we're going to make the starboard at home and I want to put just two Hellbats into the medevac instead of four Hellions and transform them, uh, which would make way more sense just for multitasking reasons. Like imagine if I'm playing a proper late game and I'm drop I'm trying to macro and I'm dropping three places at once. It's going to be really annoying having to transform all the Hellions in my drop. So I need a lot of um, yeah medevac so I can actually transport two Hellbats at a time. Now, this is a pylon. I guess we're just... This looks like a very awkward place to cannon rush, but I guess we're just gonna pretend it's real anyway. Uh, just because he did take the effort to make that pile. Oh, there we go. It is actually a cannon rush. That is funny to see. There we go. I always say cannon rushing, not really a good strategy against uh, against Terran. So uh, hopefully I should be countering this relatively easily, else that would be slightly embarrassing for me. So this one is gonna die, and then the next cannon is gonna die as well. I'll start by making a marine. Let me make sure I actually have this place covered so he can't put cannons there. So he's going to make a bunch of cannons here. All we have to do is click three to four SUVs on each uh, individual cannon. This cannon is going to go down. The probe is going to die pretty soon, actually. There we go. The probe falls. And now my Marine is going to finish. And that's going to be uh, the end of this cannon rush already. And just like that, all you need to do is a little bit of SUV micro. And then you're pretty much safe. Now, as a follow-up to a cannon rush, this is a very important point. The reason why cannon rushing against Terran is rough is because Terran gets units that are really hard to deal with really fast. So what I'm going to do here, you guessed it, I'm going to go for an ultra fast Hellbat drop. Now, I wanted to do a slightly later version, I know, but because we're playing as the cannon rush, you have to punish it by going for a fast counterattack. That's just kind of the rule of cannon rush. This part of defense is the same as normal. You want to defend it like that with every single build you ever do. And then as a counter, you want to attack them fast, ideally with a medevac, because most likely they'll be trying to expand with cannons making dt stuff like that and an early drop is just the best way to actually counter that so i'm gonna go for hellion straight away um i'm not sure if i'll be able to afford a medevac actually the thing is i i have i've never thought of this before this could actually no memes be a good counter to cannon rush because very often they'll make a cannon in their mineral line right and you kind of drop it with marines and try to go on the outside but four hellbats would actually kill a cannon pretty easily so maybe the hellbat drop is actually the counter you should do uh, against a cannon rush or at least once you defend it of course now let me check if he has his nexus up there i'm already going to go for this oh wait this build is going to work out perfectly because my starport is going to finish i'll make a medevac and then i can make a double hellion from that reactor i'm going to use for my barracks i'll have four let's see indeed it is a nexus and then once he thinks he might be getting attacked uh he will be putting a cannon down there so he's going to go for a twilight council this is stalker i don't want to take any damage on this um just so my drop is stronger, right? So I'm not going to go in, especially if it's an adept. That would be a pretty ungodly amount of damage. So here we go, guys. The four Hellbat setup. What do you guys think? Is this going to be the best cannon rush counter of all time? Or is it going to be disappointing? I don't know yet. I think it's going to be amazing. I think from this one gateway, he didn't have a unit yet. He's probably going to have two units by the time I arrive. As we saw in the past few games, two units are not going to counter the Hellbats, okay? They're just absolutely not going to counter that. And now as a follow-up, I'm going to make one more medevac, and then I'll just put two Hellbats in it, uh, which I'm going to make after my depot finishes. This build's actually going to... This is working out way too well. This, this, this shouldn't be allowed. This, this build's insane. Why is this working out so perfectly? And then the follow-up is going to be even cleaner. I'm going to make a second factory already, and then we're going to start preparing for that tank drop as a follow-up. Let's see. Does he have a cannon there? I want to guess that he does. He doesn't have a cannon. I'm actually going to make these Hellbats right away, because I just don't think he can kill these hellions would die eventually hellbats are not gonna die to this guys i can tell you guys that much they are absolutely not gonna die look at this poor stalker he even made a pretty good wall of, cute wall up there oh let me wait i can actually own him here oh no i missed my card that's unfortunate let me bring these two hellbats over and then i'll start making more of these oh he recalled his okay i thought he was recalling his stalkers that's my bad i thought he had like a stalker out on the map that he, that he was recalling to that base i mean he can try to defend he cannot kill these hellbats absolutely not there we go the cannon is built and i completely avoided 
with it with this drop. I guess I'll just go back into the main base. Wait, this, now I'm going to own him. Here we go. It's time. Now he's going to be screwed. Can I drop it on the ramp? Oh, we almost got it. That was so unfortunate. Look how scared he has to be because he knows the helmets would kill all of his workers. Oh, I didn't even notice the Dark Shrine, by the way. Let me make an engineering bay. Probably should have paid a little bit more attention. And he's not going to see the second drop coming. There we go, guys. Two helmets in the mineral line. He's going to try to run away, but his better overcharge ran out. I surrounded the Stalker. He's going to die to the Hellbat slowly but surely. And now we have six helmets against a cannon and a battery. And trust me, guys, batteries are very good. Cannons are very good. Are they going to beat six Hellbats? They are absolutely not going to beat that. Now, I do have to be careful for the T's that are probably going to hit my main base. Yeah, there's actually one here. I'll just surround it. I can see it already. There we go. That one is going to die. I'll make a turret here as well. And the Hellbats have absolutely annihilated it. And this was a beautiful counter. I feel like if I made Hellions, I would honestly, I would have killed enough probes to be ahead. I'm not sure if I would have finished the game 100%, but against the four Hellbats, there was nothing he could do. He couldn't kill that. Even if he had an extra Stalker, maybe even two extra Stalkers, there was nothing he could have done. And this was a beautiful, you know, 2013 build class Hellbats bad jobs against protos was kind of hoping we would get some other matchups too but it's cool i really enjoyed this episode hope you guys liked it as well make sure to get the video a like subscribe to the channel and I'll see y'all for the next one adios